Hello, how's everybody doing? Well, today I'd like to start a new series series of short videos that I'm just going to call Mix Quick Tips. And in this, I'm going to cover mostly Lightroom, but maybe some Photoshop and general photography areas about tips that maybe we knew or forgot or tips that we never knew at all. Or what I like to do is find other uses for the tools that Adobe has given us to make them even more popular or even more powerful as we apply them to our photographs. Today, I want to talk about the remove, uh, the Gen Remove AI tool in Lightroom and how we can use it for other than just removing things. And we're going to start out with this family picture here. And, and don't kill me, I know the light is bad. But you know, sometimes when somebody asks you to take a picture, the conditions they give you, even when you use a lot of flash, it just doesn't work out for you. And when you get those kind of pictures, you need the most help you can to bring everything in as best you can. And let me show you some tricks we can use in Generative AI Remove Tool in Lightroom to make this a little better. Let's zoom in a little bit on our subjects here. And the first one I'm going to look at is this little boy here and his hair. And it's kind of gotten blown out. Uh, because the sun's just ripping through this scene in the middle of the day, one o'clock in the afternoon. So we're going to go to the generative uh, AI tool right here, and we're going to click the, uh, the eraser and make sure you have generative AI selected. And we're going to size up our brush, and we're just going to cover that area of his hair that we want to maybe straighten up a little bit and kind of bring that blowout area down. And then we're going to hit apply. I'm going to let Lightroom do its work. And as you can see, it has brought that highlight down and made his hair look a little better. So now we have three variations here. One, this is two, this is three. I don't like that. I think number one is good. So if we look at the before and after, before, after, before and after, we have made his hair look a little more natural, a little softer, and we've taken those blowouts away. Now, uh, you can always come back to this if you want to add more by hitting refresh. It'll give us three more examples. But unlike in Photoshop, when we hit refresh, we're going to get three more and the three prior will be thrown away. All right. So make sure that you don't like one of those three before you go hitting the refresh button. You also have the tool overlay here. It's set to never. If I like to set mine to always, while I'm working because I want to be able to see this. If I do another area in the photograph, I can always come back to by clicking on this tool and going through my variations just like this, even though I've moved on to another area of the photograph. You can turn this variations, I mean this tool overlay off by hitting the H key. H turns it off, H turns it on. All right, now let's start looking at another part of the picture. This gentleman's forehead right here is kind of getting a lot of light and it's getting kind of blotchy. So what we want to do, we'll zoom in just a little bit more on him. And we're going to size our brush so we can make a nice uh, area here. Now let me show you something too that we can do. We don't want to get crazy because our brush is so big, we can't get down in those small areas. But remember in the AI tool, we have this add and subtract. So as long as we're on this tool, we can always resize our brush. So let's make it smaller and we want to get down into this area here and we fill this in. So it's not going to go right into a generative AI. Once we release the tool, uh, it allows us to modify it. So now that we've done that, we'll hit the apply. Let me zoom out just a little bit. All right, so this is one two, three, I'm not sure I like really any of those. Let me go back out just a little bit. One, two, three. Let's hit the H key to take our bounding areas off. Two, three. I think I like number two. I'm going to stick with this one right here for now. It's either one or two. I'll, I'll, I'm going to stick with two. We don't want to spend all day on this. All right, so now we have the forehead uh, straightened up a little bit. And if we turn this off and on, you can see it's a little less blown out and the color is a little more spread over his forehead. Now, uh, while we're talking about this, I'm not saying this is perfect. I'm saying this is a good place to start to get some good color and some good exposure back in the site. And then if you have more tools you want to use, you can. Sometimes you don't have to use any more. It works just fine. You just have to play with it and get it just like you want.
Now this last one over here, let's look at this young lady. We'll zoom in a little bit. Again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna make sure we're on generative AI, we have an eraser tool. We're gonna to size the brush so we can get in just this part of her face right here. Then we're gonna make it a little smaller. Our, size our brush down with our bracket key. We're gonna go across the cheek here and go up to the shadow of this hair that's on her cheek, about like this. All right, let's hit apply. Now sometimes if you make the area smaller, then you'll get better results. And we'll see how it, we should have maybe divided up the forehead and the cheek in this and we'll see what happens. There's one, two, see that doesn't look good. And three, that doesn't look good either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my overlay on by hitting the H key. I'm going to click here and hit delete. I'm going to click here and hit delete and we're going to try that again. So we're going to just do the cheek down here first, just like this. Make sure you get some overlay, I mean some area other than what you're trying to correct because it will give you a better look that way, it has more areas to sample. Hit the H key to turn the bounding box off and it looks one, two, Three, one. Let me see before, after. Don't know that I like e any of these. Let's hit refresh once. It'll give us three more looks uh, at the area that we uh, were sampling. Kind of like that one. Like that one. Let's look at two before, I mean, uh, uh, before and after. Hitting the little eyeball here still get the shadows coming in on our face which doesn't look bad we'll stick with that and then we're going to take this area right here and do a new one try to stay away from our eyebrows and we just want to get the forehead hit apply look at one two three i kind of like three on that one so now let's look at the before and after on her before, after, before, after. It's given us a lot better color, taking away some of those really blown out highlights. Looks a lot better. Now let's zoom back out and look at all our areas at once here. Okay, here's all of the group together that we're working on. And we're just gonna hit before, after, before, and after. Taking a lot of that uh, nasty brightness, uh, overexposure, and brought some color back into this area. Now let me show you one real quick one that might come in handy someday, might not, I don't know, but it is kind of fun to play with. Uh, let's bring this young lady over here and let's zoom back out a little bit. And we're on a boat and it's kind of a windblown look, but if we go and use our generative AI and we're gonna surround her whole hair area and get those blowaways, you can find that the generative AI removal can make different hairdos, a different look to the hair if you get it all uh, masked in. Give me one second here, there we go. Now let's hit apply and let's see what uh, Adobe thinks this lady's hair could be looking like. All right, there's a nice clean look without any wind blowing through. Doesn't look anything like she has now, but yeah, it's a look. Look at number two, number three. So as you can see, the generative AI has a little style touch to it too that you know uh, you could keep doing generations uh, of the different hair to get something close and it's given her some crazy earrings but it's something to think about if you have a, a subject that has really windblown hair it might be a way to clean that up and make it look a lot better than the, the hair blowing all over the place well I hope this helps out let you think outside the box uh, when you're using that gender remove tool for either removing objects restyling objects taking away at blowout areas and kind of softening the look of a color on your photograph. If anybody has any questions about this or anything that they find that's even better than this, please drop me a note. I'd love to hear from you. I will talk to you all soon.